Hello and welcome back to Manifolds, the video series where we talk a lot about calculus on generalized surfaces. And now in today's part 20, we will continue our discussion of the tangent space for submanifolds. Indeed, we will generalize the concept such that we can also use it for abstract manifolds. However, you already know, before we start, I really want to send a big thank you to all the nice supporters on Steady, here on YouTube, on PayPal or on Patreon. Your support makes it possible that I can record such videos like this one. And please don't forget to use the link in the description to download the PDF version and the quiz for this video. Now, for the start of the topic of today, let's recall what the tangent space is for a submanifold. This means here we have a manifold M that is embedded in the ordinary Rn. And now the tangent space is a linear subspace defined for each point P in M. For example, if we have this two-dimensional torus here and we choose a point on it, then our tangent space would be a two-dimensional subspace. So in this example, if the torus lives in R3, we have a two-dimensional subspace in R3. And usually, in the picture, we would translate the subspace such that it is fit to the point P. In other words, in the picture, we have the fine subspace P plus the tangent space. However, now you might remember, for defining this special subspace, we need a parameterization. And this is a map we call phi that maps here the flat R2 into a curved surface in R3. Of course, in general, it's only a local parameterization, which means we only describe a part of the whole manifold. However, the important thing is, we describe the part around the point P. And indeed, this is enough to describe the whole linear subspace we call the tangent space for the submanifold at the point P. So here you see the definition again for a k-dimensional submanifold, and you recognize the important thing is that we have the Jacobian matrix of this local parameterization. And there we know it's not a problem at all, because phi is a differentiable map. However, this whole thing makes a problem if we want to generalize that for abstract manifolds. Simply because there we don't have a space around the manifold, we don't have the common Rn around it. Hence, in this case, even if we define the map phi as an inverse of a local chart, we still don't get the Jacobian matrix of it. Simply because the Jacobian only makes sense for a map from Rk into Rn. Therefore, we have to reformulate the whole thing here for the tangent space, such that a generalization for abstract manifolds is also possible. And in fact, the idea here is that we leave the Jacobian matrix behind and look at the directional derivatives. There, please recall, for example from my multivariable calculus course, that the directional derivatives generalizes partial derivatives. In other words, these derivatives can substitute the Jacobian matrix there. So let's take the same picture as before with the parameterization phi and now let's also take a direction here on the lower level. So we could say this line here is described by one unit vector. However, now this straight line gets transformed by our map phi into a curve. And now we are interested in the derivative of this curve at the point P. Moreover, this should be a vector in R3, or more precisely, in the tangent space. So what you see here is that we start with one single variable, so we have the real number line. And then we can simply parameterize the line on the lower level. And then we map it to the manifold, and then we have a parameterized curve on the manifold. And usually we call this parameterized curve gamma. And then we don't need the parameterization phi anymore, because we can just calculate the derivative of this gamma. And indeed, with that, we get a reformulation for the whole tangent space. And at this point, I can already tell you, this description can be generalized for abstract manifolds, because curves make also sense there. However, this is a topic for another video, because here we still deal with submanifolds. 
And now we get a very important proposition for them, namely that the tangent space can be rewritten. And now the only thing we need here are the derivatives of parameterized curves. In fact, we can define the parameterization in such a way that we only have to look at the origin. In other words, the point P on the manifold should always correspond to the parameter 0. Indeed, this makes the whole description a little bit simpler. Because then we can also say that we only need parameters around this 0, so we can go from minus epsilon to plus epsilon. This is good enough, the curve can be very small, because we are only interested in the derivative at the one point anyway. However, this also means that we need a differentiable curve that hits the point P at the parameter 0. Hence, gamma of 0 is equal to P. Okay, so this is the whole proposition. The tangent space can be described as the collection of all these vectors in Rn. This sounds reasonable with the picture, but still I want to show you the proof of it. So you see here, we have to show a set equality. This implies that we have to show two inclusions. So first let's show that the original tangent space is a subset of the set on the right hand side. This means if we take a vector v from the tangent space, we can show that v also lies in the right hand side. Therefore, now we have to take the original definition of the tangent space. This one says that v can be written as Jacobian matrix times a vector x. There, x is a vector from Rk, where k is the dimension of the manifold M. Moreover, you also know that phi is a local parameterization as before. Okay, to make everything a little bit simpler, let's introduce p tilde for this point on the lower level. And at this point, you should already see that this here describes a directional derivative and can be rewritten with a curve gamma. Indeed, the idea here is that we first look at the curve here on the lower level. Therefore, let's call this curve gamma tilde. In other words, gamma tilde of 0 should be our point p tilde. So p tilde here is the point in Rk. And now the vector x should be given as the derivative of gamma tilde at the point 0 as well. And of course, this is not hard to fulfill, because we just have to define the straight line here. Hence, we simply have gamma tilde of t given as p tilde plus t times x. Then, with the domain minus epsilon to epsilon, this describes a straight line with the two properties here. However, now here, simply the chain rule can come into play. There, we have the derivative with respect to t of a composition. And obviously, this composition is phi together with gamma tilde. And after that, the whole thing is evaluated at t is equal to 0. And now we only have to define the curve gamma by using this composition. Indeed, this is the thing we already discussed in the picture above. However, now we have shown that v is indeed just the derivative of gamma at 0. So in other words, we see we have shown the first inclusion there. Moreover, we also see that we can use a similar idea to go backwards. More precisely, this means now we take a vector from the right hand side and show that it also lies in the left hand side. Therefore, now we don't define a curve gamma, but we take an arbitrary one. And for this curve, we want to show that gamma prime zero lies indeed in the tangent space of M. So maybe for this, a whole picture is helpful again. So we start with the interval minus epsilon to epsilon, and then we map it into the manifold. So in the picture, as before, we just have a curve through P here. However, now we know we can take a chart on the manifold and map the whole thing to the lower level, so we can make it flat. And as usual, we call the chart H. So now we are in Rk and we have the point P tilde. And of course, we still have the picture of the curve. So you should see, the idea here is that we have to make epsilon small enough such that the whole range of the curve lies inside this U. 
And of course this is always possible, because this u is an open set. Ok, and now you see, with the idea from before, we also have a gamma tilde here. Now it's not a straight line as before, but it's still a differentiable curve. And with that, we can simply define our vector x. As before, it should simply be the derivative of our curve gamma tilde. And as a reminder, gamma tilde is now h after gamma. Hence you see, this whole thing here is more or less the same idea as before, just the other way around. However, of course, this is what we have to do to finish the formal proof. Ok, and now the only thing missing here is that we have to introduce phi as the inverse of h. And then we can write the derivative of gamma again as the derivative of the composition phi with gamma tilde. And then of course, the whole chain rule from before works again. So we have the Jacobian matrix of phi times our derivative of gamma tilde, which is x. Hence, what we have is exactly the description for the tangent space. So this is the final conclusion. This is an element in TPM. And with that, we see the equivalent description for the tangent space is proven. And why this is so helpful, we will see in the next videos. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye bye.